Now, when we say energy, nine times out of 10, uh, I un un actually mean potential energy, but the sum of both the pot uh, potential energy and kinetic energy is called the internal energy, which we abbreviate as E. Okay, so if it's just E, it's internal energy, both potential energy and um, kinetic energy. So internal energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the system. So I've already used that word a couple times, and so we should probably define it. When I say the system, what are we talking about system? So the system is what we're studying. The chemical or physical change that we're interested in, that's what we're gonna call our system, okay? So this is the uh, chemical reaction. which I usually abbreviate reaction as RxN. I used to say to save ink, but now that I'm using my tablet, save electrons. Don't want to use too many electrons. All right. Or the physical system, physical change we're studying. So you could ask yourself, you know, we're talking about a car again, how much energy can you get out of one gallon of, you know, gasoline? Okay, so that's something we'd ask. Or cooking dinner tonight, how much energy do you need to put into one gallon of water to make it boil? All right, so those are questions we could ask about that. Um, and those would be our systems. And again, here's the uh, breakdown of internal energy. See, I can also go laser pointer, okay? So not just right on my tablet, like I can do laser pointer. Wow, look at that. So here we have energy is the capacity to do work. I won't edit this out, this is pure gold. Uh, which is the sum, of the, two, uh, of the sum of kinetic energy, energy due to motion, and potential energy. Where's potential energy? It's right over here. Uh, energy due to position or composition. And when we're talking about chemical systems, uh, what we refer to the kinetic energy is the thermal energy, which we measure as a function of temperature. Potential energy will measure, turns out we're going to measure it by the change in internal energy, but it's associated with the position of the electrons um, with the protons in the nucleus. And that charge attraction, the way those electrons are at in the bonds, determines its potential energy. Okay. Units. Units are always important, right? Uh, so what units are we going to use for energy? Okay. Uh, in chemistry and physics, you know, in, in terms of thermochemistry, uh, we primarily use the joule, J-O-U-L-E, which is abbreviated uppercase joule. And uh, what those units are, it's a drive unit, uh, comes from an equation for E. And it's a, probably a pretty... Um, famous equation. Okay, so if I said E equals, what would you say? MC squared. MC squared. Yeah, so MC squared. Some guy named Al came up with that. He was a cool guy. Um, so MC squared. So what is the mass? <laughs> what does the M stand for? Pretend, pretend you didn't hear me. <laughs> mass? Yes, you got it right. So mass, so uh, the, the M is mass, and we could use units of kilograms. All right. C, what did C stand for? Speed of light. Speed of light. And so that was meters per second. See, I got that one right. I asked you the question first. So, and then so a kilogram meters per second squared. So one kilogram meter square, meter squared per second squared is one joule. So that's where that unit comes from. All right, so what are some other units 
we use. So that's kind of abstract. Oh, a kilogram meter squared per second squared. Oh yeah, I understand that. Just like energy's capacity to do work. So let's take a little bit more practical approach to this in terms of energy. What are other units of energy we use on a pretty much everyday basis? What about, here's a hint. How about uh, if you're thinking about, I don't know, exercise or nutrition? Calories. calories. Yeah, there's, there's where I was heading. Uh, so calories is another unit of energy. And so that's a little bit, I think where that comes from is a little easier to maybe uh, grasp your mind around. So it turns out that one calorie, so one calorie, which we abbreviate all lowercase c-a-l, is the amount of energy needed to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Right. So that's where the calorie comes from. Metric and a lot of metric physical, pro or a lot of uh, physical properties, um, the units associated with them are always traced back to water, like Celsius, zero degrees, 100 degrees, always melting point uh, boiling point of water. So we're basing a lot of things on water. All right, so what's, how does that relate to a joule? Well, a joule is smaller, okay? And so one uh, joule, one calorie is equal to 4.18, yeah, 4.18, 4.184 to be a little bit more exact, but 4.18 joules. So about four joules equals one calorie. So it takes about four joules to raise one gram of water one gram of water is one milliliter, so not much. One milliliter of water, one degree Celsius. All right. But it turns out uh, in exercise and nutrition, not that I'm going to worry about it too much, um, that's not the calorie, calorie we use. All right. It's kcals. Yeah, exactly. So calorie is actually a really small unit of energy, lowercase c. So when we talk about how much energy we use exercising or how much we eat, it's actually a Upper, upper case calorie, uppercase C calorie, or a kcal. So in nutrition, what we see is we say one uppercase calorie equals 1,000, I don't know why I write those so small, 1,000 lowercase calories that we use in chemistry, or that equals one kcal. So if you had a snack that was 100 calories, that's really 100,000 of the calories that we use in chemistry, or about 400,000 joules. So you can see those are pretty small uh, units of energy. And so when we talk about the unit of energies uh, and transferred in a chemical reaction, you're going to see we're actually use kilojoules because they just produce a lot more energy. Uh, you know, kilojoules per mole, a couple hundred to a couple thousand kilojoules per mole is what's transferred on you know, chemical reactions.